Joining me now to break it down, Greg Zerzan, former Department of the Interior Principal Deputy Solicitor and a former Acting Assistant Treasury Secretary. Um, great to see you, sir, and always like to get your insight on this topic because right now Americans are still dealing with inflation over 8%, higher cost of, of food, higher cost of living, goods, services, everything. You add to that the fact that gas prices came down a little bit, but now they're poised for a rebound here. I mean, OPEC doesn't have to play ball with us, right? And that's what so many people were trying to urge the president to understand, that OPEC is out to keep this price high. And that seems to be where we're headed. Right. Thank you, Jackie, for having me. You know, uh, as President Obama said, elections have consequences. So something I hope people remember is in 2019, America produced half a million mm -hmm. barrels of oil a day more than we do today. And sometimes people say, well, that's not really apples to apples. Well, in 2020, the height of the pandemic, the last year of President Trump's administration, we produced 100,000 barrels of oil a day more than in 2021, where in the oil producing states, the pandemic was open, uh, was over. And this is all the result of policy choices of this administration. They have only themselves to blame for high prices. Right. You bring up a great point. I've studied these production numbers ad nauseum um, because I'm, I'm constantly looking at the future market when it comes to crude oil. And with respect to production, the other aspect of this is that, okay, it took us two and a half years during the pandemic to get just back to the point where we were at peak production before COVID hit us. But those two and a half years, we could have been investing in infrastructure to drill more, which actually would have added another two million barrels a day to that peak production level. And that's where the deficit is. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, your your last segment was about government spending and Congress just pushed through this massive deal, this new green uh, deal that is going to get us, you know, gas, uh, you know, uh, uh, is going to get us oil and supposedly going to get us all these new things in addition to wind and solar and all the other green ideals. But the promised permitting reform, which is what is really needed, is dead. It's yeah. dead on arrival. It's almost certainly never going to happen. So if they want to deliver on these promises because they've finally realized they have to get more oil and gas production, they need to do things that they're simply not willing to do. No, they're not. And actually, uh, in the so-called Inflation Reduction Act, the investment was towards green energy. It was health care. It was not anything that will reduce inflation. Mm -hmm. And don't you think two examples that we recently saw um, kind of I illustrate the fact that this is not not, you know, something the country is ready for right now. I'd point to California, where the governor was asking people not to charge their electric vehicles at certain times of the day because there wasn't enough electricity and the grid couldn't handle it. And I'll point to Florida, where we saw Hurricane Ian and people trying to leave and evacuate with electric vehicles, not enough charging stations, wet batteries, all kinds of problems. Um, you know, the goals are lofty, and a lot of people believe in them in the long term. I think probably the majority of the country could get around clean energy. We just can't do it right now. Right, right. I mean, Elon Musk makes the best vehicle in the world, in, in my opinion. But the problem is, if everyone drove a Tesla, we would have a massive nationwide blackout. We simply don't have the infrastructure. So if we're going to transition to an electric future, which would be great, we're going to have to do it by producing oil and gas here in the U.S. and not bottling it up and making it impossible to transport or ship. You know, someone made a great point the other day um, that I was having this discussion with, and they said, this is also about potentially control. Government Government control, right? Oil and gas are portable. You could always, um, you know, even during hurricanes or whatever the case may be, people can take their canisters and fill them up at the pump as long as there's, you know, enough supply there. Having said that, when you see power grids go out completely or you've got a governor telling you you can't charge your vehicle from this time to that time, um, it, it, there's really sort of a, a power mechanism there too as well. Well, you're absolutely right, and you're much younger than I am, but when I was a kid, California was our future, and Ronald Reagan was the governor, and he provided a pathway for uh, really a golden age in America. Now people say California is our future, and it's a nightmare where you can't get electricity to charge the electric car that you're forced to buy because they won't let you have oil and gas. Yeah, and there are so many people that left that state during the pandemic. They won't be returning businesses as well as a result of the policies there. It is not uh, some sort of golden um, utopia, if you will. <laughs> Craig, good to right. see you. Great to see you. Thank you Thank so you, much. Jackie.